October 31st, you have a million three hundred and eighteen thousand. So I don't know, understand. Are we going to drop a hundred a million dollars within two months? So uh, it's the reserve item. So we have to contribute to reserves. That was approved for the 2019 budget to fund uh, 1074796 to reserves. So what you're saying is that between now, uh, pardon me, between the 1st of November and December 31st is going to be a transfer of a million dollars to the reserve account? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions uh, for the treasurer? All right. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Thank you, everyone. All right. <laughs> Excellent report, as usual. Um, we have some significant new business, and for the moment, I'm going to hear from um, the CAM because there's been a lot of questions on the Century Village, uh, Century Boulevard project, but then we're going to skip to. Um, uh, the bylaws, which uh, may raise some significant discussion and take some time. Um, I neglected to note that we have 154 uh, signed in delegates, uh, more than sufficient to do business. All right. Uh, Donald, uh, why don't you tell everybody about the status of the, uh, the, the Great Century v Boulevard uh, sidewalk poor. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'll keep my report brief. Uh, some of you may have noticed we started pouring the concrete sidewalk last night. Uh, I expect that'll happen through the beginning of next week. Uh, the part that matters to you all is that we're not planning to close the road um, wholesale. Uh, we're going to keep that road open as much as possible. Uh, for today, for instance, we just closed down one lane, and the concrete trucks are working in one lane, and cars are moving out in another lane. We're going to do that as much as possible during work days. Uh, we just have too much uh, traffic right now in season to close that road. Uh, if we do need to close the road, check the blog. That's where the, your, your, your updates will be. But they'll be short and, and as few as possible. Uh, other than that, uh, once the concrete sidewalk is poured, you can expect to see a new curb, followed by a new fence, followed by new irrigation, and then sod. And then that will be the end of the project. So uh, we'll keep you updated. Just keep checking the blog. And um, if you guys have any questions, um, now is a good time. Or, or most of you have my phone number. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just a quick one. Uh, usually, is that going to be concrete only? Uh, as opposed to what? To asphalt or whatever. No, it, it's a concrete sidewalk. Okay. The whole. No, the question of this, you know, we have on these sidewalks. It's all we have. There's always buds from the trees, roots, whatever, lifting uh, through the years. Is that going to happen or could happen in the, the way? And the second question, I see when you pour metal, usually you also put some kind of metal in, you know, like uh, iron bars or whatever. Okay, so, so Mr. Gladstone, the um, metal you're seeing are the concrete forms that are used to keep the, the concrete in place while it's still wet. Those will be removed after the concrete has been cured. Yeah, and what about the roots? I mean, this is going to happen. Ro roots, are, roots are a problem. Um, yeah. it, there's just kind of no stopping them. We've removed as many trees as possible. Um, we will deal with that as, as it becomes an issue. But yeah, th this is something that I deal with on a regular basis, where a piece of sidewalk pushes right up because the root decides that's where it wants to be. Uh, it's just something it needs to be keeping an eye on over the, over the, over the next years. I would point out that the engineer did indeed hold up the project um, for the problem of a biological material, roots, etc. We think most of them have been removed, uh, but roots are always a problem. The concrete is reinforced with uh, fiber, fiber yeah. particles. It should be pretty solid. And it will, the, the base was recompacted just before the pour. So I think I think we'll have a good a, as as long as nobody starts running big vehicles up on the sidewalk. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good morning. Just one quick question. I know we had a glitch in the construction on the sidewalks because of grading. Did that glitch affect the ultimate cost of the project? 
Uh, no, ma'am. There's, no. no, there's been no, uh, and, and frankly, that's what we pay our engineer to do, to hold up that job if it's right. not up to his exact specifications. But uh, no, no financial impact on us. Thank you. That's Yeah, we have been adamant. Any mistakes that the contractor uh, has to correct, it's at the contractor's cost. It's not costing us another penny. All right. Any other questions for, for the CAM? All right. We're going to skip now. I'm going to call up... Um, Anita Buchanan, and we're going to get into these bylaws. Hopefully, we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> uh, where did Anita go? I'm going. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was leaving. <laughs> oh, she was escaping. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'll use the podium for my papers since I, if I stand behind it, I can't see you. So anyway, um, good morning. Thanks for, for being here as always. Uh, we're voting today on articles six through eight um, of the proposed 2020 uh, amended bylaws. Um, and you'll be happy to know, as Dave said, there is light at the end of the tunnel uh, because after today, after we vote today, there's only one small batch of bylaws left, only four pages worth uh, to be voted on. So all your hard work, all this time is, is coming to fruition. Um, we're going to vote article by article, as we always do. But uh, as I said in the article in the paper, we're not going to walk through them. Um, it, it, the um, articles 6 through 8 run 11 pages in revisions. So it's a lot. But we hope that with everything we've done, with publishing in the paper, with having a town hall um, that was the better part of an afternoon going after going over them um, line by line word by word in some cases uh, and uh, publishing them again uh, pr providing a summary a, a quick summary of the the top 12 the delegates dozen um, that was also uh, in the reporter um, and emailed out to you last week we hope that you're ready to go. Um, we're going to take your questions and, of course, um, your, your comments. But I, I'm going to assume that um, you, you've come um, ready as you usually are. Um, I, I, I want you to take a look at your packet. At the very end of it, you'll see a delegate's dozen. Do you see that? at the back of your packet that you, that you brought into the meeting with you today that you picked up at, at sign-in? I hope you have that. That delegates dozen, as I said, is the, the um, top 12 changes, uh, most significant changes in the original bylaws um, that we started with. And they're separated out from all three articles. Um, I said that I would um, go over those with you today if you wish. If you've already done enough reviewing and you're sick of all this, um, and who would, who would blame you, um, we, can, we can just go um, right through to voting. A couple other things I want to tell you. At the back of your booklet also, on the back of that, that paper, the delegates dozen, there's also a one-pager. Do you see it? Yes, okay, everybody's got it. Um, it's called What We're Voting On. You see that? Um, and our recording secretary, John Hess, put that together for us. Um, it's kind of an instant guide, kind of a, a cheat sheet to the um, top 12 changes, um, so that when you um, vote on the um, three articles today, by article, you'll see the, the main issues, so they'll be fresh in your mind uh, when you vote. Uh, so thank, thank you for that, John. Uh, let's see what else we have. The main document also came in your packet. It was um, tucked into it. It's the revisions of articles uh, 6, 7, and 8. And I think you know that 
those revisions came from uh, the town hall that we did um, on um, uh, these three articles and it uh, was it prompted many many emails uh, from you uh, and so we put them that, that town hall and we put them all in the revisions that's what we're voting on today um, again those have been uh, in the reporter they've been published there that we sent them out in um, email to you uh, we had them at, at the town hall I guess what I'm saying is I hope you've had enough of them so that you're ready to vote okay a couple um, major points points of information um, six through eight revisions have been approved by the advisory committee by the officers committee and by the executive board um, all votes as with all bylaws require a two-thirds vote today so all of the articles six through eight um, require two-thirds and if I heard it correctly we had a hundred and fifty four um, so two-thirds of that if my math is right is that 102 help me out okay so we need a hundred and two to pass um, any of the articles today um, for each of the three articles I'll ask the chair when we're ready to state the question and call for discussion you'll have discussion and then we'll call for a motion and ask for a vote um, we're going to ask you to keep your comments brief so everybody will have a chance um, to speak um, I think I think that's it do you have any questions on what I've said yes 103 to be exact thank you okay thank you 103 is it right okay okay very good thank you um, okay article 6 is executive board and it's first do you want me to go over the delegates dozen no, no. good <laughs> yes question um, good you know it tells me that you really did come prepared as I as I knew you would um, and that's really cool um, can yes we, we have can a, we put it up on the on the yeah we need a motion well let's let we're going to call for discussion right oh the, yes we no the, the right the motion c can come from the need a uh, motion yeah all right All right. Do we do we have a second on this motion? Thank you. All right. Jackie Carlin seconds the motion. All right. Now we're open for discussion, folks. Please come up to the mic. Uh, uh, do we do we have a graphic that's uh, appropriate to what we're voting on? Um, I I have to interrupt for just a minute. This is Sandy Cooper. Um, I think it's that the amount needed is 102. Oh, it is 102. Jesus Christ. What is it 154? Yeah. This is 103 rounded. Exactly. You got to round up to the nearest whole number. Oh, I feel okay. like half a person today, so. Thank you. Yes, Randall, you have something for us. Yes, I do. Uh, there's a conflict which exists between Section B term and Section I vacancies regarding presidential appointments to the executive board. I'd like to read a concise explanation before I present the motion. When filling a vacancy on the executive board, either from a list of unelected candidates by presidential appointment or even by special election as a last resort, such vacancy is always filled for the unexpired term of, this, of that seat. In instances when the candidate list is depleted, the bylaws now require the president to fill such vacancies and to do so within 14 days, with the reasonable expectation by both the president and the member selected for the position that he or she will serve out the unexpired term of such seat. But what of vacancies which occur on the executive board during the first year of two-year terms? Such vacancies are filled for the unexpired term when filled from the candidate list or by special election, but not when filled by presidential appointment. 
Article 6B term limits all presidential appointments to one year with each appointment expiring at the annual installation. Therefore, this provision prevents the president from appointing replacements for the remainder of the term for seats becoming vacant during the first year of the two-year term. Its purpose was originally to prevent the president from appointing additional members to the executive board for periods longer than a year, and it's also worth mentioning that the bylaws never before required or even suggested that the president fill vacancies at all, but simply be permitted to appoint up to eight additional members. Now that, now that the selections are, are limited to four, practically speaking, all future presidential appointments would be used exclusively to fill vacancies, and those which do occur in the first year of the two-year term cannot properly be filled by the president. Remember, all presidential appointments are subject to approval by the delegates. Left as is, when the president is required to fill a vacancy in the first year of the two-year term, such vacancy could only be filled until the next election, when a different person would fill that same seat, providing there were excess candidates, or if there was not more than 10 candidates in that election, the president would be required to fill the same seat with the same or different person for the remaining year, using yet another of his now limited appointments. When a bylaw creates an absurd result or violates the principle of fairness, it requires modification. I move that Article 6B term have the following exception added so that it reads as follows. Members elected, uh, selected for appointment by the president may serve for periods up to one year, with such terms expiring at the annual installation, comma, except in instances when the unexpired terms of the seats being filled exceed one year. I submit this for recording. All right, this is a motion. You've this is a motion. Thank All right. you, Randall. I don't, I don't it, it, it's, um, it's pretty heavy duty, and so it's hard to absorb. Um, I think that we, we probably, it, unless people have, have questions and discussion on that, we probably should um, accept your motion and vote on it, and we will, we will make the change. I, I have to say I need to absorb it a little bit more before I do Anita, it. Anita, forgive me for suggesting that as part of the revisions that you and I worked hundreds of hours on, this was submitted to the advisory committee, but it hit the cutting room floor, motioned by Marilyn Goedetza and approved by all of you. So this is not the first appearance. It's been well thought out and the changes required. Okay, let me, right. uh, let me do this then. Um, Rather than your motion to change it at this point, I think we need to look at it and and talk about it a little bit. But you, is it possible for you to move that this be Article Six be accepted um, with that exception, with that modification, which we will fix and then come back with? I think you ought to fix it now. I, I'm hoping that we're going to get a second. If there's any discussion, that's okay. fine. It's, already uh, it's in order. I've already su submitted it to your advisory committee. It's already been reviewed. It wasn't understood. It wasn't explained. And now I hope I've explained it to you. And the power is in your hands to make this change. All right. We have a motion on the floor. Okay. Do we have a second? Where are we? Betty, Betty Blackman seconds. <clears throat> we have the motion. Ho hold on. I'm not aware there is another motion. Oh, okay. All right. All right. He, he yeah, but he's he's made a technical modification. We can't just ignore it. All right. We we could we could. David, David, let me let me go ahead, David. Uh, look. The motion to approve Article 6 is a general motion. It's a motion to amend the documents that we exist. My motion is an amendment, okay, to the existing proposed amendment, which is completely legal, okay? It's completely legal. So, yes, there is a main motion on the floor. Mine is not a main motion. It's a subsidiary motion, a motion to amend, and it is well in order. Okay. Uh, can we... Vote on the initial main motion, assuming the modification that you have made, Randall. 
Yes, you can. Is there any problem with doing that? There might be four other amendments that people want to make. Yeah, that certainly could happen. So why you, don't you we... You can't assume that my amendment is the only amendment that anybody wants to make to Article 6. You deal with the subsidiary motion first, which is my motion. If adopted, then it's integrated into 6, and the next person can get up if they want to change. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Everybody kind of following the river here, the flow? No. <laughs> All right, so... Marilyn, why don't we just label this subsidiary motion, which Randall has explained, right? and call it up for a vote? Okay. Um, let's do that, which means that um, it's, it's now open for discussion, I assume. Yeah, but why are we calling it executive board? Because that's the title of Article 6, and that's what we're voting on. Okay. We're voting so on an article. We can't make a graphic on the fly. As, ama just yeah. says as amended. Yeah, exactly. Article 6, as amended, with a language that... <laughs> okay. All right. Because uh, we got to make sense of this later in the minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah, article. So we're going to put this up. Uh, sometime before the next glacial advance. <laughs> Come up to the mic, Ed. Ed Grossman, Wellington A. Happy Holidays. And we all acknowledge the, uh, Randall's proficiency in this area. And he brought up that it was given to the board and cut to the floor. I really would like to know how many people really understood what he just said. Uh, 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 it's very clear to Randall, and it should have been clear to the board. And I think we're sort of sidestepping it. I think it should be published. I'll Excuse me. I can very uh, Randall. Well, all right, Ed, there's another approach. We could simply, uh, well, I shouldn't uh, say I'm that. I'm we I'm should simply vote on the main motion and do the modifications later. Oh, well, I was going to suggest that this really, while Randall says it's combined, I think this should be brought up at another meeting and published. Everybody's saying, oh, it's up to you. We spent years trying to put this together, and this man has spent a lot of time reviewing it. And unless you all understand it, you would be voting on something you really don't know. I don't know if it's really a subsidiary motion, if it's a separate motion. I mean, it's his motion, it's his proficiency, and all I'm saying is we want to finish but it's been four years in the making. So it should really be published as Randall said it and reviewed and set it up as a separate item. That's my personal opinion. And I, I, think, I think that um, what you're saying is that we, this is a, an amendment as Randall said, he is, he's doing, you're not comfortable accepting it, so you are suggesting that we would approve um, Article 6 with the exception of 6B and that you want a modification of it. You, you want us to come back with the modification. Randall, what's your opinion of that since it's your, your motion and your amendment? I, uh, I don't think that's ill-advised, but I think it's much to do about nothing. If in three sentences, if you give me the opportunity, I can explain why this is important. Let's do it. Let's okay. do that. That's better. The president is limited in the amount of time he can appoint a person for. Can't be for more than a year, and it has to end at the annual installation. The president no longer appoints additional, even though it says it, he fills vacancies. 
if he's asked to fill a vacancy because the candidate list is depleted and the vacancy occurs in the first year of a two-year term, he's then appointing somebody, let's say three months. Come March, that's, that person who should be serving for 15 months is only serving for three months because he has that limitation. In instances when he's filling a vacancy, in the first year of a two-year term, he should be permitted to fill that vacancy for a period longer than a year, which is for the expiration of the term. And that's all this says. Make an exception in his ability to appoint when there is a vacancy in the first year of a two-year term. If there's three months left in the first year of a two-year term on an executive board vacancy, that's all he can do is appoint for three months. That's it. That's his limitation. All I'm saying is let him appoint for the expiration of the term, which is the way filling vacancies always happens. I think uh, one other thing we ought to note here, in 12 years he has made no appointments whatsoever. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. That's yes, true. President. And guess what? He could have packed the board every year for eight years, but he, he didn't. And that's why we've changed it from eight to four. Because we don't know what the next yes, president, president might do. All right, but we're working on it. Absolutely. And I think your suggestion is great, and I think what we ought to Mr. do is go President, ahead and call for the vote. Just they don't, vote on it. We've and got do your it. choice. You've got yes or no. If you don't like it, put a no. If you like yes, we mark have it. wasted much too much right. time. On Marilyn. The yes, Marilyn Gordat, the president of Camden D. We have wasted much too much time on this. Randall and I are dear friends and go back a long time working on advisory and on all of the changes that we've been making all these years.